I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's video. It is uh, Thursday, October 5th, I think, and um, you got very warm Santa Ana conditions here in Long Beach in my uh, garage studio. At least it's a dry heat <laughs> as far as that goes, but uh, you know, we still have good tuna fishing offshore. Uh, it's been hit or miss for some of the boats, uh, especially in the northern zone, Channel Islands, the stuff off Cats, stuff, you know, around that area. But there are uh, plenty of fish around and plenty of opportunities to catch fish this weekend. Uh, looks like good weather everywhere as well. But um, as I mentioned earlier this season, I'm going to start getting back into doing my uh, SoCal Bite Fishing Academy videos uh, as we get into the fall, winter, and spring months. I think I probably do one a month and then do reports the other three weeks, or sometimes I might do two a month, depending on how fishing's going. But um, this is going to be the first one. One of the reasons I want to do it is because I can do it in my office instead of in the hot garage. But uh, uh, Matt and I took a trip up to PV last week, uh, yesterday, Tuesday. Time's flying away from here. But uh, uh, we had okay fishing. It wasn't great. But, you know, we had to work for the bites and figure out how to get them. And then we got a couple of nice bites uh, later in the trip. But, you know, this... Uh, I shot GoPro this whole trip, and I've got about a 10 minute video um, where I'm gonna take you through what we're doing, look at our thought process, explain how we're going about. You know, we hadn't been up there in a month, had the Marlin tournaments and Warriors on water, Matt working my bad leg, so it's been, uh, we kind of went up there blind, and it took us a while, we found some nice fish. And I'm gonna break down how that worked out in the, uh, in the video. So I invite you guys to uh, join me here. All right, so this is uh, the part of the trip where Matt and I were heading up to uh, Rocky Point here, and there's kelp on, around the uh, point, and he's making some casts. So what we thought was the up current edge, it was kind of going in towards the beach, but it turned out not to be, so we ran up around to the other side of it to, um, to make some casts on what's actually the up current edge. In a situation like this, if there is a biting bass and it's kelp, it's going to be right on the front end of it, and um, it's easy enough to make two or three casts and know that, yeah, that's right or that's wrong. Current tends to swirl around rocky. I'm going to show you an aerial photo here in a second. But basically, as far as that kelp head goes, you can hit four sides of it or three sides of it and know pretty quickly if you're going to, going to catch a bass there. It looks like a big spot, but it fish like a really small one. Yeah, as you can see here, the, um, the point has a, a big ring of kelp around it, but if it's uphill current, it's going to be on the top end of it. If the current's going into the beach, it's going to be on the end right off the point there, and if it's going... The other direction is going to be on that outside edge. So, once you fish through that zone, you're basically heading down into what I would consider the area below Rocky, towards Torrance Beach from there, which has uh, kelp beds that are tight to the beach and also sparse kelp on the outside. And um, that area really can uh, hold a lot of bass, but they're very difficult to find. So you got to really cover water and figure out where they're at at any given time. I'd also like to mention I took these photos uh, while I was on my wife's birthday helicopter ride, which I had a lot of fun doing. Uh, so as you can see, Matt's fishing through this zone, and uh, he, we've been throwing that little slug the whole time, but last time we were up there, it was similar conditions where we're seeing a few bass, we're not responding to it, so um, he's going to pick up a little hard bait that he had thrown on a previous trip. We have similar conditions. We're not seeing as much birds. Hard bait? Yep. Yep. Yes, you were... problem is we haven't had any short bites or seen a bass up here. You saw one. Uh, back there, but... One. There you go. First cast. Second. Second cast for who's counting. So once Matt got bit on that hard bait, uh, I switched up as well and we started catching some fish. I don't remember how many we caught. You can probably see it in the video. I think I caught a few more than Matt at this point. 
I was throwing a little uh, Lucky Craft 100 pointer. He was throwing a small SP minnow. So you can see there I just ran the boat. We're on that outside kelp on that step below Rocky and um, current's going in towards the beach. It's got the kelp laid down below the surface, but you need to be on still on the leading edge outside edge of that kelp to get bites. And uh, so that means driving back to where you started up from before instead of just uh, making one drift through. And, you know, it's not really good fishing right here. I think I cut a couple of that drift. But you can see here I'm going back through the zone one more time where we had our original bites, making a few casts, and just covering water. And that's, you know, I talk about covering water all the time. You got a barracuda there. So we decided to leave this area. I think I caught one too. But, um, Covering water means maybe driving 100 yards, maybe driving 100 feet, and making a few more casts, but it's that covering water and casting that makes the difference. So, we started to see pretty generic conditions here. There was no more bait. There was bait where we caught those bass. So, there's a lot of very uh, similar kelp running through this whole zone. And rather than uh, beat it up, we decided to go down to uh, the next section, which we call, uh, we call shark fin, which is a rock out jet uh, that comes out from I think it's called flat rock by the surface or something but uh, there's some kelp in there and we started to get some bites along that kelp edge and uh, just kept moving through there so as you can see in the shot of a shark in here the point comes out the rock comes out there's kelp on the inside of it kelp on the outside of it kelp on the beach up above it and all these areas can be holding bass but not all of them do on any given time and usually this real thick stuff is not where the things are living they're living on the outskirts of this stuff, on the isolated patch of the kelp. They're laying inside or outside of the rock and along the current edges. In this case, the current was running left to right. So the fish were, I'm sorry, right to left. So the fish were on the outside edges and any little saddle that came out and showed to the right. Um, the same holds true for the uh, area below there. So basically this is the last major piece of structure until you get into uh, what we call Torrance Beach or Rats Beach. And you can see the, the kelp extends. This is the kelp extending down from Shark Fin. And the other kelp is a kelp at what we would call Rat Beach. Um, this is often the most stable area of water in the bay. During the summer it tends to get too warm, uh, pretty stagnant. Um, but during the transitional months you can normally get a another degree or degree and a half out of there and these fish uh, need current just like anything else but they're going to be out on these isolated patches of the kelp they're going to be on the edge of these kelp beds and that's kind of what we did is we just ran along the outside edge of the kelp and uh, got a lot more bites than fish but to actually developed a pattern so we started getting some bites here along this kelp edge and like I said we didn't catch a lot of fish but we got quite a few bites enough that they were ruining our little slugs they were keeping on small bait, just blowing out on it, so it wasn't really great. But eventually, we ran out of fishable water, and you, know, you can see we're, if you remember from the photo, we're just going down along this edge, catching a bass here or there. Uh, we've got the pattern, we've got the presentation down now. We just need to find more water that's similar. And eventually, we ran out of kelp edges that had isolated stringers on the outside that had current on them. As we got into that area by Rats Beach, which like I mentioned, it gets kind of uh, slack in there a lot. And um, we really just kept moving. And then we decided to run back up to the area from before and see if those fish would respond to the slug the same way they did down in the area below. And it turns out they were ready to bite. No, I Oh, there's a bite. <laughs> Came back. Nice. Well, you got some hook. That chiller. Oh my god, look at all the bass. Holy shit. There was 50 fish right there. Nice. You think he ate it? <laughs> oh yeah. Shoot. Oops. I just said two come up behind yeah, mine. I saw it. They're out of here. Yeah, they are. Show the camera the <laughs> he completely swallowed that slug. So what had happened was the fact that uh, 
the area that we caught the fish on a hard bait slacked off a little bit, that current had come to the surface in a similar manner as it did when we uh, were catching bass down on the beach there. So now, after catching one, we went back to try and refine our drift a little to get back on the leading outside edge there. And there was actually some double current, some going out to sea, and then there was a definite line where it went in towards the beach, and that's where there were a couple of big bites for us that uh, really made our day. Oh God, oh boy. Good one, huh? Get it. That's a good one. That's a kill. Oh, there. Oh, boy. Don't tell me shit. Grab on your side. Oh, God, that was a big one, man. Fuck! Taking a Oh, damn it. That was the fish of the day right there, that buddy. That was the chance, yeah. Yeah. There was a big plot hole where my bait was. Yeah. I'm not saying that was a giant, but it was definitely a fucking nice one. Yeah. Right. Our biggest fish is about two and a half pounds. Yeah. That was definitely quite a bit bigger than that. Yeah, I just paused. Oh, oh, there you go. I just paused God and my freaking damn, look at pull. <laughs> line look at straightened pull. out. Look, he took Jeff's line. <laughs> oh, he took line. Get out of there. Get out. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> he's pulling line. That's a big one. Fucker. Try slacking off on him. Uh, hold on. Oh, you bastard. Swim away. There he is. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, please. You can't lose two in a row. <laughs> there he is. Oh, come on. Son of a bitch, Eric. Swim him out. That was a good one. Just swim away. There you go. There he is. Oh, yeah. Walk him up for the bell. Oh. <laughs> Walk him up for the bell. <laughs> yeah, look at this one. Jeez. <laughs> oh, one. boy. There he is. There's fish of the day. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at this. Oh, fish boy. That yeah, that's what I needed in my life right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I needed. <laughs> that was awesome. Nice one. <laughs> Woo! I was not really loose two in a row, man. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, wow. So this kind of just sums up uh, some of the basics here. You know, the thing to always look for when, when targeting calico bass and kelp is uh, track your water temperature from spot to spot. You know, it doesn't always have to be warm, but you want to know if it's warmer in one area than another. Track your water color. Keep tabs on if the fish are biting in cleaner water, dirtier water. And also, um, current direction. You know, the current direction that you're going to want to look for is either uphill or downhill, which is parallel to the coast in either direction. Um, those are the two best. Uh, sometimes current going straight in towards the beach can bite, usually not as good. But current going straight off the beach is pretty much uh, garbage and to be avoided. You're, you know, it's nowhere for the bass to organize in a way that you can uh, effectively target them. Uh, once you get to an area that has right conditions, try some different presentations. Uh, you could throw a swim bait on a lead head. We like to fish stuff on the surface, so we fish the slug or the MC swim bait or uh, small hard baits. Um, you can fish wherever you want, a hook a bait, an Alabama rig, whatever. But once you figure out what they're biting, try and see what the conditions are where they're biting it and see if you could replicate that somewhere else. 
and um, if the conditions change, try and change your presentation. We changed from a slug to a hard bait and started getting bites, but then conditions changed slightly where the kelp came back to the surface, then they got back onto the slug, and we need to put the hard bait away. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that you're going to track throughout the day and throughout all the trips you take throughout the year, and it'll help to give you a better understanding of uh, where those fish might be. And just remember that if you went to spot A and the current was going in a certain direction a month ago and spot C or D had the same current direction on that given day, there's a good chance it's going to be the same when you go back out there. So you can track those things and improve your learning curve. And um, eventually you'll be able to uh, kind of predict where these bass are and uh, how to catch them. So that's about, uh, that's about it. All right, guys, that about wraps it up. I hope you learned something you might be able to take along and uh, use on your next trip, be it for calico bass or anything else you fish for. And um, I'll be back next week with my uh, normal fishing report again. So have a great weekend and good luck if you fish.